put your hands into the anointing because it's in the anointing that that seed multiplies. desire in your heart guess what you know it will come to chapter 1 verses 16 for I'm not ashamed of the what of Christ for it is the power the power of God amen it's the power of God amen it's the power of God hallelujah I want you to see that because sometimes we look at it and we don't really get a real picture now I want you to go with me Amen, to uh, 2 Corinthians chapter 5 and verse 17. Therefore, if anyone is what? He's a new creation. So one thing, it's one thing being saved. It's another thing feeling like you're a new creature. Feeling like you feel power. There's a whole different story. Yet none of the rest dared join them. And I, want to, I want you to understand this. I, don't, I believe I'm making this clear. Am I making this clear? I don't, I, I'm just going through Acts, looking at salvation. I'm not making this unclear. I'm telling you right now. Amen. Uh, this is not complicated. Hallelujah. This is real simple. Amen. Go with me to the end of 2 Corinthians chapter 13. Amen. 2 Corinthians chapter 13 and verse 3. 2 Corinthians 13, verse 3. Since you seek a what? Of Christ speaking in me, who is not what? But mighty in you. Look at the next verse. For though he was crucified in weakness, yet he lives by the power of God. For we also are weak in him, but we shall what? With him. By the power. Power of God towards you. How must I live? By the power of God. By the power of God towards you. I didn't come with persuasive words of man's wisdom, but I came in demonstration and in power that your faith should not rest in the wisdom of man, but in the power of God. Hallelujah. In the power of God. And look at the next verse. Examine yourselves. As to whether you are in faith, test yourself. Do you not know yourselves that Jesus Christ is in you? Unless indeed you are disqualified. I tell you what, when you feel, when you... <laughs> Hallelujah. You see, when you feel Christ, you feel like a new creature. You feel like a new creature. You feel like a new creature. Let's take salvation to another level. Amen. God doesn't just want to save you. He wants you to feel Christ. He wants you to have an experience. Amen. He got anointed. He died on the cross. He shed his blood. He rose from the dead. So guess what? So you can be anointed. Amen. So that you can become a Christian. Not just a believer on the Lord Jesus. It's one thing to be baptized in the name of the Lord Jesus. It's another thing to experience Christ. Amen. Amen. And there's no condemnation of those in Christ Jesus. And boy, I, I can line you up scripture after scripture after scripture on what I'm talking about right now. And you can preach on this for hours. We have a six-tape series, I believe, on called Christed that just deals with preach Christ, preach Christ, 
Preach Christ. Preach Christ. Preach Christ, the power of God and the wisdom of God. Amen. This is not just like something normal. We've got to preach salvation to the point that while we preach it, somebody, amen, who's with me, realizes, guess what? I know, I, I, this is supernatural. Yet, yet, none, go back to that verse, yet, none of the rest dared join them. I believe it's Matthew, what is it, Acts chapter 5, verse 11, 12, amen. Yet, none of the rest dared join them yet none of the rest dared join them but the people esteemed them highly look at verse 14 i love this and believers were increasingly added lord both both men and women look at the next verse so that they brought the sick out of the street and laid their beds and at least the shadow of peace of passing by might fall on some imagine if billy graham walked through the stadiums with so much power that everywhere he walked, thousands of people just falling under the power of God, getting full of the Holy Ghost, getting healed and delivered and set free. I believe that's a whole lot better. I believe that's a whole lot more powerful. I believe that that's what God really intended. And look at the next verse. Amen. And the multitude gathered from the surrounding city of Jerusalem. The multitude gathered. You don't have to worry about drawing a crowd. When there is power. Amen. When there is genuine power, amen, I tell you, people will come. They'll say, man, you, you, you the, it's for real, eh? It's for real. This is real power. It makes you feel like a real Christian. Feels like I can do something. A surge of confidence, amen, where you believe that you can do the impossible now because you feel Colossians 2 9, in Christ dwells the fullness of the Godhead bodily. Look at that, Colossians 2 9, in Christ, in Him, and that's talking about Christ, dwells the fullness of the Godhead bodily. Look at the next verse, and you are complete in Him, who is the head of all principles. You are complete. You are complete. It's not, not, it's not like you're lacking anything. Amen? You see, the more you believe that, I'm telling you to the degree that you really believe that. Amen. Power is going to flow. Power is going to flow. Power is going to flow. I expect the Holy Spirit to fall on people. I like the sister, uh, your wife, last night, her ear. Wasn't it her ear popped open? For what, 30 years she hadn't been able to hear that ear. Just from the presence of the Lord. Just from the presence of the Lord, she was so touched, Brother Warren, i got to tell you something. i got to tell you something. I haven't been able to hear from this ear for 30 years. And my husband said something I, I can hear. Just from the presence of the Lord. Hallelujah. I believe it. I believe we can pack out the stadiums in America. And while you're preaching, thousands of people just fall under the power of God and start talking in tongues. Amen. Amen. Why not? Why not? Why not? Why not take it to another level? Amen. Why not believe for God to do something Amen. that is beyond you, that's absolutely supernatural? Amen. Cast the net to the other side. Amen. And he'll fill it with the fish. Oh, it's not, it's not man's methods. We've been toiling all night long, God, trying to catch fish our way. And God says, now I'm going to tell you there's another way. It's called the Holy Spirit. It's called listening to the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit will guide and lead you in all truth. There's another way. It's kind of like the eagle. When he's vision, when he wants to extend and expand his vision, he sets his eyes. I love this. He sets his eyes towards the sun. He soars and he looks at the sun. And while he looks at the sun, oil glands begin to stimulate in the side of his eyes. Normally he can only see like a certain distance, a mile or whatever it is. But when those oil glands, that little oil film from the side of his gland drops over his eye. His vision is suddenly increased another couple miles further. And he can see further than he has ever before, but he sets his eyes towards the sun, which stimulates his glands. And once those oil droplets drop over his eyes, he can look down now, and he can see the fish beneath the water. And now he can go supernatural fishing. God wants to anoint your eyes. He wants you to step into the anointing so you can see the fish beneath the water. One time I was with the pastor. We went to a restaurant. I said, you want to see somebody get saved? 
He said, what do you mean? I said, I'll show you how easy it is. My wife can tell you this for a fact. We were at the survival a little while ago, so I walked down. We went into, what do you call those, Hardee's or Wendy's, McDonald's, something like that. And I put my hand on the counter like this, and I said, I'm going to release the anointing on the counter. And I put my hand on the counter like this, and I just said, I release the anointing. The lady came up to take my order. When she took my order, the minute she touched the cash register, I could feel the anointing go through that counter and touch her. And I could feel, and I looked at her and I said, your father died when you were seven years old. And I said, since then, you blamed him. You blamed God for killing your father, and you never went to church ever again. You've hated God. But I'm going to tell you something right now. God didn't kill you. God didn't kill your father. The devil comes to kill, steal, and destroy, and God began to have me minister to her. Tears started flowing down her eye. Before you know it, she came to the table. I took her by the hand. I said, just take it. God's going to touch you again. And when I prayed for right there, she hit the ground and started talking in tongues right there in Wendy's. And that pastor sat and boy said, I've never seen anybody get saved that way. I said, you can do it anytime you want to. I'm challenging you. We always try to make salvation some kind of works thing, some kind of formula, special program, special way of drawing them in. How about taking it a supernatural way? Do you think I believe? I'm believing for souls like you cannot believe. I'm desperate for souls. I'm hungry for souls. Amen. But I want to see a soul come sucked right in into the power of God. Amen. And right when he sucked in two, three days later, he can cast out devils, heal the sick, and raise the dead. And we don't have to sit and put him through a brainwash program for five years. Yeah. Amen. Come on. Some of you need to go to a higher level like that. You need, you need to believe God to do something miraculous. Step beyond yourself. Amen. Into the supernatural. Hallelujah. Touch your eyes for a second. Just say, Father, anoint my eyes that I may see. Now I want you to put your hands on your head and say, I thank you, Father, for the blood of Christ that purges my conscience from all dead works, all negative thoughts, all evil thoughts, all vain imaginations. I declare the blood of Christ purges my mind right now that I can see you and all your glory, all your power, all your anointing. Open.